When you start to run your code more often or on a server, you want to have logging in there somewhere so you can see what's happening and what's going on with it when you're not watching it. In this video, I'm going to show you two different ways you can do that with this web scraping example here. The first one's using print, and now I've talked about this before and I've advised against it, but it does have its place. And the second one is using logging. Now they are both going to be using the event hooks within our HTTP client because that is what we want to actually log the requests that that scraper is making to the server. So I'm using HTTPX, but this absolutely works with requests as well. They have exactly the same thing works in a very similar way. So if we look at the event hooks page here on the HTTPX documentation, it tells us that we can add in these hooks for a request and response, and we can then decide what we do, and it has some information. Within the request, you actually get access to the URL, etc., and the response has everything apart from the body, I think, which you would need to call read, but that's fine because we're not going to be logging the body. We literally just want to see when the requests were being made and if they were successful. So it's nice and easy to do this. In fact, I'm actually just going to copy their example and we'll put it into our code. So let's come down to our client down here and let's put this in. We need to indent this like this and we now and add this here. So we now have our client set up here with the event hooks added in. Let's just give ourselves a little bit of extra space there uh, so we can see what's happening. So every time we make a request, our code is going to print out this information here, which is basically going to uh, say what method was being used and the URL. And when we get it back, we get this response here, which says the method, the URL and the status code. This is exactly the information that we want. You can see how easy it is to add this into your program. So I'm going to save this and we're going to run this code now. I'm just going to double check that I haven't got too much print uh, out coming here. I'm going to remove some of these print statements because we are not going to be needing the actual data that's coming back. Let's clear this and let's run this code. Python 4 doesn't exist. Main.py. Here we go. So we can see all of the responses. I'm going to close, close that and we'll go back up. We can see that we're getting the pages. So we have this request event hook get that says, hey, we're making a, a request to this page and here status 200. This is the information that we want, but there is one piece of information that is missing and that's the date. So let's make sure that is in there because otherwise we're going to have no idea when this and when any of this happened. So we need to have date time in. So I'm going to do from date time. We're going to import date time like this. And this will allow us to create a date time object in Python. So let's come back down to our main here and I'm going to add in time is equal to date time dot think it is now this will allow us here so what we're going to do is we're just going to add this in to start with we'll have time like this and something like that this should work fine time okay save and close let's run it again so now we have a time and date object when this is all happening. So this is all well and good, you're going to say, but this is just printing to the screen. What do we actually do with this? I always run my code on a Linux machine, whether it's uh, on a uh, digital ocean droplet, which is a Ubuntu server or a Debian server, depending what you chose. So what we can do is we can just output using the double arrows to our log dot uh, our uh, out dot log file like this. What this is going to do is this is going to output all of the standard out into a log file for us, which will then be able to investigate if we need to. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to wait for a couple of seconds. I'm going to close it and then I'm going to cap my log file. And here is all the information. Let's open that in NeoVim. And here we have everything there. So you can see the time, the response, etc, etc. <clears throat> So when you're running this on your server in your cron job, instead of just having the run with your main.py, you'd include the double arrows and the out.log here too. So this is good. I like this. This is a very simple way of, of getting it and it's very easy to add in. So it doesn't take up much time or effort. Now the other thing we can do is actually use the Python logging module which is going to give us access to warnings and information. So it will actually have different levels 
and this can be highly configurable. Now, I have not dived into this nearly as far as I suspect some people have. However, for what I do, I generally don't tend to use it too much anymore. I just need to see some basic information, but it is really powerful and you can have all sorts of custom bits in. So we're gonna have a really simple logger here. If we look down here, you'll see that we have format, basic config. Before we go any further though, I want to talk about actually the file. So you can of course have Python save the file for you and do it all that way instead of doing it via the output like I did in the other example. This is all well and good and you absolutely can do this. I just find that maybe having an extra thing that your code needs to do is not that useful. We can just output it using standard out and then we have no errors because our operating system will always have that standard out that we can use. And when we print, we can choose what exactly goes out there. Maybe we wanna add a couple more things in or maybe you wanna include a lot more information. You can print that all out. Let's go ahead and remove our print logging from here and add in the actual logging module. So we'll do import logging. So let's set up our basic config. So we'll do logging.basicconfig. I think we want format is going to be equal to uh, over here. So let's do the time. Let's paste you in there. And let's have the um, level name. And then the message, which I think is just message. There we go like this. So this is going to give us access to this logging information and now instead of our print statements down here in our uh, log requests we can do logging.info. Let's have this as an info request and this should give us the information in but we want to add in the uh, request.url as well. So let's just put in uh, request dot url and let's comment out this for the moment logging.info and again we'll have um request status uh, response dot status code we need to add in the level here so i'm going to put this at level is logging dot info and this should give us uh, that out to the screen now format this should be a capital once we added in that uh, the level so we actually log this thing you can see that we're basically getting the same information which is what we asked for the url and then the uh, response with the uh, the response status code here. It's essentially the same information if you wanted to do it this way. This much, this way is obviously much better if you're planning on building out or expanding on this, but for really small code projects like this one that you're just running every now and again, it's probably fine to just do the print statements. So let's just add in a file here as well, um, which I don't tend to do as I explained just a minute ago. We'll say um, scraper.com log like so and add our format back in format Let's save this and now when we run this code it should all be logged to our scraper log file okay stop that and let's just do mvim scraper log and here is all the information that we logged just now so what do you think? Is it worth using the actual built-in logging like I'm doing here? Do you log to file? Do you print the log? Do you then use the Linux system, the server to save it into a file for you? Let me know what you do. I do both. Print logging is sometimes just quicker and easier, but obviously the actual logging module is much more powerful. If you want to see how I wrote this scraper code so you can adapt it and amend it to websites that you want to grab the data from, going to want to watch this video right here next.